Hi, welcome to this another edition of The Conversation. I'm your host, Lincoln Robinson. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have a very special guest, Evangelist Nigel Trifor. Welcome to The Conversation. Thank you. Good to have you. Me. Yes, it, indeed it is. So today's episode will be focused on a very important topic, identity crisis. Because it's a serious issue within the Christian body because many persons are confused of who they are and what God has done for them. That is why many are doing all kinds of weird and absurd things. But praise be to God, this, this, on this edition we will discuss such. So Mr. Nigel, could you help us understand what is identity crisis? I think it's a very good question for us to fully understand what is identity crisis. I think we need to separate the two words and give kind of a definition to the terms identity and crisis because identity crisis, there are two words that have been joined together. Firstly, if we're talking about identity, identity is the way in which we define ourselves, the way in which we define ourselves our values, our belief, our personality, our role in our family, our role in society. Okay? Secondly, crisis. Crisis deals with the period of uncertainty or confusion that one would encounter as he goes through life. So in understanding your identity and crisis, it gives us a better platform to start. Let's talk about our identity. Our identity has to deal with who God created us to be and who we are in Christ. Now, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, the Bible says that we have been created in the very image of God. So, right off set, God is saying to us that we are His divine, godly image. Now, that gives us our identity. Mm -hmm. That gives us our identity. The other thing we must understand, too, that our identity is made stronger when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. For the Bible says that in Him, Christ, we live and we move and we have our being. Mm -hmm. Now, as human being, being created in God's image and being in the body of Christ, we go through all kinds of things. And right there is where the question of crisis comes in. So let's talk. Indeed. So we are of God. We yes. are created in God's image, and that's what we should understand. Yeah. So um, from your perspective, and as an evangelist, yeah. so what do you think caused many persons to be confused about who they are in Christ? All right. One of the leading, firstly, one of the leading psychologists, mm -hmm. Eric Erickson, he says as he tries to understand what is identity crisis. He says our identity begins firstly from within the womb, within our mother's womb. Our identity begins, in hereditary as they would call it. And then he went on to say that environment influence our identity in that very often we try to adopt to suit our surrounding, our environment. Very often, we suffer from what people call peer pressure. Now, peer pressure and identity, I think they intertwine. They go, they go hand in hand. Identity crisis should not be limited to any specific group of people, in that any person can experience identity crisis. Now, in answering your question, I, I want to stray a little bit. Mm, okay. Jesus was with his disciple, and uh, his disciple asked him a very fundamental question. In fact, he asked the disciple, who do men say I am? Mm -hmm. Who do men say I am? They paused for a while, and um, one of the disciples says to him, 
Some say that you are John the Baptist, some says that you are Elijah, and they gave all kinds of answers. Then says to him, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. And Jesus in turn says to him, Peter, the flesh and blood did not reveal this, but my Father who is in heaven. Now Jesus affirmed his identity. Your question again was? Caused many persons to um, be a, not to stray from the identity or not focus on the identity. Good. That what caused them to stray from I, their identity? I can't say there is one contributing factor, but I can say primarily is that they do not know or understand fully who they are and whose they are. All right, who they are firstly in Christ and whose they are in that the Christ that they are in, he owns and control them. All right, many people stray from their identity because they want to adapt to society norms, they want to adapt to other people's standards and expectation, they want to adapt to the current culture they want to they want to fit in they want to fit in it's for example the church today is suffering from what i call secularization secularization means the change from religion to civil ownership and use the church is changing because it want to adopt the current culture of the world so we would know that the worldly music are creeping into the church. The worldly dressing are creeping into the church. The standard that the world set is creeping into the church. I think that is identity crisis in that we do not know, in, in, in that we, we forget who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. In Christ. You see, that is quite important. I like to remember Colossians 1.13 tells us we have been conveyed into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And by accepting Jesus, it automatically means Romans says you are a new creation. Yes, it therefore might mean you are new from the crown of your head to the soul, you are a new person. Yes. So we are a new person in Christ. So what does it mean to, to know your identity? How is it impo how important it is to know who you are in Christ? All right. For a person to know who he is in Christ, he must do a number of things. Firstly, he has to know Christ as his personal Savior, as his Lord and Savior. If you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you cannot know who you are in him. Secondly, after you would have known Christ as your personal Savior, you have to daily trust him for leadership and direction in every area of your life. Trust him daily for leadership and direction in every area of your life. Thirdly, you have to totally depend on him to influence your lifestyle, your purpose in life, your ambition in life, your goals in life. You have to allow him to influence those areas in your life. Now, Many people say that Christ is their Savior and their Lord, but they are not allowing Him on a daily basis to influence their life in that they live one way and they say that they are Christian and Christ is their Savior and Lord. And uh, the thing is kind of conflicting and confusing. That is, um, that is so accurate. You know, Scripture tells us how our believers should behave and how believers should conduct his or herself. Yeah. But oftentimes we have seen believers not behaving the way they ought to behave. You see, um, I, the, I, I'm convinced mm -hmm. from reading the scripture that the person can only be deceived if they don't know their identity. Beautiful, yes. Yeah. I have listened to, I have read on social media, many persons being deceived by pastors or church leaders and they do some things that I consider ungodly. Mm -hmm. So is this as a result of not knowing who you are in Christ, so you believe anything that comes your way? 
All right. One of the things that causes us not to know who we are in Christ is ignorance. That is true. Ignorance. For example, you look at social media, and here is a group of people who are under the leadership of a so-called pastor, and he instructed them to eat grass. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, you have seen the disciples of Jesus eating grass. Correct. Nowhere in the Old or the New Testament mm -hmm. you have ever seen those practice. For example, also, I saw on social media that one of the pastor took a candle mm -hmm. and put it on one of the brethren's head and light the candle and says to him, while the candle is burning, your problem would be burnt away. And the man was in excru excruciating pain. That's stupidity. Correct. Many people are suffering because of ignorance, because of the lack of knowledge. The Bible says my people perish. They do not want to read the word of God for themselves, study and analyze and understand the word of God. And so, ignorance is one of the reasons. Now, ignorance, when we talk about it, it's not a bad term. It means lack of knowledge, lack of information. Mm -hmm. And that lack of knowledge and information can be as a result of downright laziness. That is so true. Um, I can remember scripture. Jesus said to his disciples, and this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true and living God, and mm -hmm. Jesus Christ who has sinned. So eternal life is knowledge. That's right. Um, the book of 1 Peter tells us God has given unto us all that pertains to life through the knowledge of him. Good, so beautiful. It therefore beautiful. tells us, if we are not knowledgeable, if we don't read the Word of God, we want to understand who we are, we want to know our identity. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the serious problem. I am, I, I can't understand, I can't fathom the reason why some religious leader who's supposed to be in relationship with God would instruct the members to do these things. So could it be too that the one given the instruction doesn't have a relationship with God or doesn't know who he is in God? Beautiful, yes. I can say very positively that many of these so-called leaders, firstly, they did not take time off to cultivate a proper relationship with God. Many of them are in this thing for what you call gain, mm -hmm. all right? And because they have not cultivated that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saying, I don't know who I am. I can't help you to understand who you are. True. You remember the story with the prodigal son? Mm -hmm. He was having an identity crisis. In that, the man left his home, left the father's palace, took what was his, and he went into the country and he joined himself, he wants to adapt to the lifestyle of the country, to the citizen of that country, onto the point where he lost his identity and he was eating in pig's pen. Mm -hmm. He was going through some crisis. He left his identity. That is so well. Well, you're tuning into the conversation. I'm here with Minister Nigel. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 